kitchen fitting's easy. Well, it is for me. I've been doing it for years. My name's Eve Way, and today I'm going to give you some basic tips on kitchen fitting. I guess you want to find out how to install a kitchen sink into a worktop. Well, I'm going to show you today in this short video how to do the setting out and the cutting out and install this sink into this worktop. We're going to start by turning the sink upside down and positioning it just where we want it. We're going to make sure that the bowl is going to fall with inside the unit and we're not going to end up cutting the unit to the bowls on display. This worktop is 600 wide and the sink is 490 mil. It's going to give us about a 55 mil setback at the front, which will allow 65 mil at the back, which will become about equal if we tile the splashback. To make sure that we fall inside the cupboard, I'm going to square up from the sides of the cupboard and then draw my lines after. If I line my bowl up in between them lines, I know it's not going to fall outside the cupboard. We're now going to set my set here back to 55mm. Mark a line, one end. And a small line on the worktop of the other end. Now we know that's square to our worktop, I'm going to make a few small pencil marks around the sink. I'm then going to remove the sink and lay masking tape on top of the pencil marks. Remark it so it will be clearer to see. Okay, if I now lay my sink back in place on top of the worktop, making sure my bowl is going to fall between my lines and not be outside the cupboard. Checking my 55mm setback with the set square at both ends. I can now draw around the sink and the lines will be clearly visible. Now I have my lines on the sink which are the outside perimeter. If I cut to them lines, the sink will just fall through. So I need to allow for the setback. The setback on this manufacturer's sink is 10 mil. It's quite a common setback, but do be sure to check your sink's guidelines as if it's not supplied with a template. I'm now gonna set back into the center of the hole each line I've just drawn, 10 mil. Now using a straight edge, I'm going to draw them lines in. Always be sure to clearly mark your new lines as to not cut out the previously marked wider lines. I do this by marking a small arrow from either side. Now we've done the setting out for the sink and done our reduced cutback marks, I'm going to be removing the worktop in order to actually cut the hole for the sink. Right, so we're now going to cut the hole for our sink to be sat in. To do that, we're going to use a jigsaw. Before I can start cutting with the jigsaw, I'm going to be drilling holes into the worktop to allow the jigsaw blade to go through and cut my fine line. To drill the holes to allow the jigsaw blade into place to start cutting, I'm going to be using a 19mm spade bit. You can use, this, use the formula I'm going to show you with any size spade bit. By placing the spade bit flat against the cutout line and lifting onto the point and pressing down to mark, that will give me my first mark. Doing the same on the side, flat part of the spade bit onto our cut line, lifting onto the point will give me my second mark. I'm going to make a small drill line just in between them lines. That will be my guide drill hole for this spade bit to go through. Okay, we're now going to do the same on all four corners. That's all four holes drilled. I'm now going to cut out the hole with the jigsaw. I'm going to be wearing protective goggles for this. Then I'm going to be using a downward cutting blade in the jigsaw. I'm going to place the jigsaw blade into the drilled holes. 
and follow along my cutout line. Right, now we've cut the hole for the kitchen sink in the worktop, we're going to remove the central piece and we're going to make sure that the hole fits the sink perfectly and there's no trimming required. That's a good fit. Now we can remove the sink and carry the worktop back into position. I've removed my masking tape. I now need to lift the sink into place. And in this particular unit, I'm going to have to make a small cutout of the top to allow the bowl to sit in place. I'm going to mark either end of the width of the bowl and also where the bowl is going to sit on the front edge as well. I'm going to square these lines round and cut this out using the jigsaw that we used earlier. Done and dusted.